Hey everybody, uh, it's, I'm back, I've been off for a little bit, but uh, this is Lyndon Jones, and this is Boxing Therapy. Um, I just got done watching Kell Brook versus Kevin Bizier. Um, I already felt like I knew how that fight was going to go. Um, it was a second round stoppage by Kell Brook. Mm-hmm. Um... Unfortunately, you know, because I mean, this he had this is a mandatory that Kelbrook had to fight. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, because you know, with the IBF, you gotta fight your mandatories, otherwise they'll strip you. Because I mean, if you look at Tyson Fury, for instance, they stripped the man because he didn't want to fight his mandatory because he was in the situation where he had to he. Well, he didn't have to have the rematch, but he wanted the rematch for the money to fight Vlad Klitschko again, because the money would have been bigger versus fighting who his that mandatory for the IBF, who nobody really knew anyway. But um, as Kevin Bizier, um, he didn't really he it didn't he, he didn't look like he was on Kell Brook's level at all, and I mean I knew he wasn't, you know. Um, he didn't show anything special. He was just coming straight forward in the first round, making it an easy target for just Kale just to pick off on. Um, in the second round, though, which I, it was kind of weird for a moment that Kale he was he was coming in real hard at the beginning of that second round. <coughs> uh, excuse me. He's coming in real hard at the beginning of that second round. Then, like at some point. He seemed like he was back. He was backing off. He's backing off a busier for some reason, and I I've seen him sort of do that in some fights for some reason. Like he, like I don't know. Like he just doesn't go out. Like if he feels like I don't know. It seemed like if he like if he's got an advantage, he seems like somewhat you know like to take his time and maybe not get rid of his opponents as soon as possible. But um, I guess Kale, um, he did a. He he fainted back on one of Busier's punches, and then he came because he came back with the uh, good right counter, caught Busier flushed on the jaw. He was hurt. Uh, that was contributing to the first knockdown. Then I knew after you know he got back up, Busier got up. I know it was only a matter of time. You know, Kel came in, did some combinations, and finished him off in the uh, in the second round. Uh, but I gotta say that. Um, Kell Brook for this performance. I mean, he look he always looks good. You can't knock him for his style, but um, yeah. Right now, he his next fight's got to be a big fight. Um, I was listening to the post fight interview. He was he was uh, he mentioned he wanted the green belt, uh, Danny Garcia's belt that he's got. Um, he wanted to unify. He wanted to unify the division. You no, know, he mentioned uh, Timothy Bradley, Miguel Cotto. Um, um, it, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. If he's going to do some type of, uh, like he said, he's going to try to fight a Danny Garcia, what do you know, a unification fight or cause the only other person and in the ranking right now where he could fight for, you know, in his IBF rankings would be Errol Spence. Cause Errol Spence is number two in the IBF, according to the, you know, the actual IBF website, uh, he's number two. So, but regardless, um, Kell Brook needs a big, big fight to put him on the map for his next fight because the boy's got, he's, he's got talent, man. He's good. I mean, he's, they don't call him the special one for nothing. I mean, I really want to, I would love to see him fight Timothy Bradley, uh, Miguel Cotto, or, you know, Errol Spence Jr. I would love to see him fight any of those guys because I believe, or, the matchups will be really good. Even I mean, I can't even. I don't even know why I haven't mentioned you know Keith Thurman, or I don't know if he could actually fight Sean Porter again or not. But any of those fights would be good because those those need to happen for Kill because the guy is thirty six and zero and like he's he's got a big record and he needs a big fight to for people to recognize who he is in the welterweight division. And I I mean from looking at Kill, I mean he's kind of. He's kind of stacked for a welterweight, and um, I mean, I was I was you know reading some news that you know because he wants to unify the division first apparently, and then probably move up to 154 pounds. I ain't gonna say 155 Canelo weight, whatever. 
You know, I know about the fight with Amir Khan. But I, I don't even know how that whole situation is going to go because, you know, Amir Khan and Canelo are fighting for the the middleweight title that Canelo has, even though they're fighting at 155 pounds, which doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't even understand that whole situation and how that's going to play out and whatnot. But, you know, stuff's crazy. Um... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching the uh the uh Andre Ward fight come on later tonight. Um cover that and uh I'm gonna I'm gonna end this video on that and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one again. It's boxing therapy. I'm out.